Restoring Love. When we first did Restoring Honor in um, Washington, D.C., it was a one-day thing. And then we added a, um, a spiritual event on the Friday night before, and Tanya and I rented out the, um, the Kennedy Center. And um, I'll never forget because everything, everything was against us. In the Kennedy Center, nobody wanted to come um, and put that thing together. Um, and nobody, um, the Kennedy Center did not want us there. They threatened to shut us down. They said that uh, we couldn't pray there. And they said, well, it'll just be an opening prayer and a closing prayer. And I said, no, get them back on the phone and tell them that I'm going to have them pray. Every speaker is going to pray. Go ahead, cancel us. And they ended up not canceling us. But they hated us. Every second we were there, they hated us. Um, and then we went to Jerusalem. And we did the second chapter, um, Restoring Courage. This is the last chapter. This is it. Uh, restoring love. Honor, courage, love. This one is the most elaborate. Um, on Thursday night, the American Airlines Center here in Dallas, Texas, is, um, is having um, uh, an event called, I think, Restoring Freedom, and it is from Freedom Works, and it is free pack. Tickets are on sale for that. They're over halfway sold, I think. Um, it's going to be an amazing thing. People come from all over the world. I'm going to be speaking there. Some huge names are going to be speaking there. That's a political event, but not a party political event. Then that morning on the Friday, the 27th, we have, I believe this is the largest food um, a food drive ever attempted in America. There are 12 cities. We're trying to fill all these semis up and uh, send them to 12 different cities to fill their soup kitchens. Plus, already 25,000 volunteers have volunteered to come in with their families and work for a few hours, work at schools, work at libraries, work in the inner city, clean up neighborhoods, clean up parks. 25,000 people. The, co the coordination of this is amazing. That afternoon... There is something else uh, that is going, Under God Indivisible. James Robison, who is a uh, friend of mine, uh, he got together and put together a, a huge um, meeting of the minds with pastors and priests and rabbis to come together and talk about the principles of America and what should be said um, on the pulpit. James Robison is uh, here now with us. Hi, James. Hey, Glenn, how are you? I'm very good. It was good to see you. The, what, what city were we in when I saw you last? Denver. In Denver, just last, um, just last week, and you introduced me, and you were, you were so kind. Well, um, you, you connected. You didn't think you did. You, you hit it out of the park. It was great, and everyone was thrilled beyond words. Well, uh, I want to ask you this. You told me you were going away to be with God mm -hmm. and family, mm -hmm. which, you know, every time we talk, we talk about the importance of Jesus did that to get up alone with God, how important it is for us, and especially church leaders who do it, it seems, so seldom. How was your time with God and family? It was great, James. In fact, you could barely get me off the mountain. Um, it, was, uh, it was really fantastic. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I, I, I wrote to my uh, business partner on the plane back, and I said, uh, I wrote him, you know, just a deal, and he... he, he he wrote to me when I when I got off the plane. He wrote to me and he said, "I can tell this was settling because your note is so clear and so simple. I haven't seen a note like this from you in a long time." So it was it was very settling. So James, tell me who you've put together for this uh, this event on Friday. Well, it's remarkable. We start in the afternoon, and I at two thirty, and I really encourage people to make it an all day event. Uh, you can get. Uh, a meal. Uh, we will go 2.30 until 5, have a meal, and then come back out with Phillips, Craig, and Dean at 6.30, and then the speakers beginning at 7. But in the afternoon, we're going to have several briefings. One of them will be from the Defense Alliance Defense Fund, and they're going to talk about what actually is in health care uh, in this package that is imposing a, an all-out assault on the community of faith, those who value of the preciousness of life, as an example, as well as to let church leaders and churches know 
how they can take a stand when so many of the moral and principal issues have been drug into the, dragged into the political arena and how they can stand for virtue. We're also going to have a businessman show how we can take a penny, 1%, <clears throat> and balance the budget. This is quite amazing. You're going to be hearing some, some very dynamic speakers, plus all of our panel of speakers from the evening will be there. We will actually be taking some questions in the afternoon from the audience. But you're going to be hearing from Dr. Tony Evans, Dr. David Jeremiah, from Franklin Graham, Dr. Ravi Zacharias, my pastor and the one you listen to so often, Robert Morris, Father Jonathan Morris is seen so frequently on the uh, uh, Fox uh, News. He's such a tremendous Catholic He's a good guy. representative. Samuel Rodriguez, who touches 30,000 Hispanic churches and is just a real leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll hear from Kenneth Copeland. You'll hear from Jay Richards, who co-authored the book, Indivisible, with me. Pastor John Hagee, Rabbi Spiro, who is probably one of the great economic minds. Pastor one of the largest Baptist churches in the country in uh, First Baptist Orlando, Pastor David Yu. You'll hear also from Richard Land, who is the head of the Ethics Commission for Southern Baptist, which is the largest denomination uh, in the country. Bishop Harry Jackson, Dr. Ken Hutcherson, Chris Hodges, who is a representative chosen by the art churches, which are some of the most powerful, largest, fastest growing churches consisting of young people, probably average age from 28 to 32. And they selected Chris Hodges, Jim Garlow, We'll also be speaking John Hagee. It's going to be a tremendous, tremendous evening. As a yeah. matter of fact, if we do not have a spiritual awakening, which it really puts the emphasis on the power of love, and you know love doesn't mean that you refuse to warn people of the danger of their precarious uh, direction and our perilous course, but it, it does it with compassion. You know, the Spirit of God is redemptive. The spirit of the enemy, the liar, the murderer, the deceiver, as Jesus called him, the accuser of the brethren, that spirit is a spirit of destruction. And that spirit is prevailing in Washington. It is prevailing in an assault on the family and on relationships and on influence and personal responsibility. It's an all-out assault to destroy the basic foundation that enabled us to become the most prosperous, benevolent nation in history. So I, I know that I know that you know these pastors and priests and rabbis are getting together, and I know you guys are going to talk a little bit about what should be said from the pulpits and how to say it, and when and the things that you know um, they have to warn the flock about, et cetera, et cetera. But people who are going there, are you guys going to touch on at all? On you know, let's say I'm a I'm a Catholic, or excuse me. I'm a Mormon, and my church doesn't really work this way, but, I mean, I'm a Mormon, and, and so I, I have this, you know, I have this pastor who's, I think, just going off the rails. And I go I go talk to him, and, and you know, I he's on the wrong side of the issue. What do I do? How do I most affect and help my church get back on to the right track? Um, well, as you know, that's the reason I joined with a Catholic philosopher as an evangelical Protestant to write the book, Indivisible, Restoring Faith, Family, and Freedom Before It's Too Late. We have actually given the textbook to the parishioners, to the congregation, the church members, as well as to the shepherds who may have chosen to be silent and be more like hirelings than shepherds. We, we have actually laid out the ground rules, and here's what's going to happen at this conference. We're going to show people the imperative of people of faith, those who value faith, family, and freedom, coming together as a mighty coalition, and I know that's a political term, but as a a power base of influence to correct our nation's course. If we don't do it, we will not correct the course. It will not simply be done by a political party because political parties, each one, need to make some corrections. And the church, the people of faith, are to hold up a standard that points people back to the reliable course, to the safe course, to the sound foundation. We're going to so equip people and so inspire people that they're going to go out and realize that we're going to have some differences. Uh, you know, you you were helped as a person who was desperate with, with an alcohol problem and other issues. You found some compassionate people who helped you, and you also reference AA as being a contributor. Mm-hmm. Today, when people get in trouble, rather than finding a friend or finding a compassionate connection and a compassion connection like you're talking about in Restoring Love, we simply wait for the government to send us a check. That's kind of like keeping the prodigal son in the pig pen and make him a little bit more comfortable or make people as comfortable as they can be in the ditch that they dug with their rotten choices. We have got to allow pressure and problems to bring us and, and literally 
move us toward help. You know, I don't and help is not Pharaoh, Caesar, or the federal government. It comes from our neighbor, loving God and loving one another. We're going to show that Catholics and Protestants. Let me give you this as an example. Catholics and Protestants alone, if they would stand up for what they say they believe, could change everything in this country immediately. There is that's the numerical base. That is that is the faith base. That is the pro family, pro marriage, pro freedom base, pro faith base that can turn this ship. And we've got to get them to register. We've got to get them to get informed and be inspired enough to get active. And that is what we as as church leaders coming together, knowing that we've got some theological differences, maintain the freedom. We've got the right to discuss our differences and take a stand. If we don't turn this ship a state, we are sunk, and that is no exaggeration. Well, uh, James, um, you can go to, um, is it uh, uh, Under DFW, God Individual? DF, here it is. It's yeah. DFW dot Under God Indivisible. Dot org. DFW, right. That's exactly right. Okay, DFW, DFW dot, dot Under God Indivisible dot org. Tickets are five bucks. Um, and you can go in and you see all these great speakers, and it's a, it'll be a spiritual it'll be a spiritual moment. And, and James, am I coming? Am I speaking that night or not? Yes, you are. Okay. And you you you, okay. you said, "Can I come?" You're the one that that inspired us to come together. The whole media is going to be looking all over the world to say, "What are these church leaders going to say?" Mm-hmm. And Glenn, I know you have such gratitude for what church leaders are doing, who are willing to stand up. I do. And, and be a light piercing the darkness and, and I, not remain in silence and comfort and compromise. And, and you, you express such gratitude. You know how much I love you. We have developed a wonderful friendship, and, and I believe that you are 100% right. It's love that never fails. Yep. And well, we've got to return to love. James, I, I appreciate it, and, um, and uh, I, I tell you, I support any, any faith that will stand up for true principles and uh, and and say them, I, I'm not for, I'm not for anybody getting up and saying who you should vote for or or a party or something like that. But to stand up and say these are true principles and these are God's laws uh, or uh, what, what do the founders say? Nature's laws um, and uh, God. and nature's God. I mean they're they're clear over and over and over again, and anybody who will stand up, I stand with. And, and I thank you so much for everything that you've done, James, um, and we'll uh, talk to you again. If well, you I wa- pray everyone who's going to be coming to uh, Restore and Love will go ahead and make reservations on dfw.undergodindivisible.org. Uh, and you. come be with us. Thank you very much, James. I appreciate it. Find out all the information. If you, if you don't remember that address by the time you get to work or wherever you're going, um, just go to mercuryone.org. And um, and it'll be up. We'll put it up on the front page. Tell somebody to put it up on the front page in case it's not there. Um, but uh, just go to one of the websites that you can remember, and and we'll make sure that it's posted there. Very worthwhile spiritual event. Make sure you're there. Tickets start at five bucks, so it's it's no big deal. Um, go to um, go to mercuryone.org and get your seat now.